Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Father Mark here as we're finding God in the midst of where we are in life. And as we are together in this very particular season in life, I think it's important for us to have wisdom, to hold on to something. I know that a lot of us have been looking to different places to find direction, to get through COVID-19. Some of you have stumbled upon this podcast. Others of us might be seeking uh, other um, things to keep our mind off of things. Some of us might continue to look at the news or social media, whatever you're looking at. Um, Here's what I try to hold on to in times where I'm really struggling. Number one, I want to find wisdom that is 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 relevant to my life. I, I need people to speak things that make sense to me. I need sources of um, encouragement that are connected to my experience. The first thing that I look to when I'm trying to get through a crisis like COVID nineteen is I just I want a message that's relevant to my life. Second thing that I try to to look to is not only do I want that message to be relevant, but I want that message to be tested by time. Just because something is new uh, doesn't mean that it's uh, it's it's filled with wisdom. Just because people are speaking doesn't mean they're speaking the truth, right? Uh, I want something a source that has been through um, what I'm going through before, right? I want to know that it's it's stood the test of time. And the third thing that I, I look to as a source that's going to help me get through it is I want something that's going to help me uh, with some direction, give me some practical steps to get through what I'm going through. So I don't know about you. I know that all of us have been looking to different things, but those are three things that I look to in my life. I want to know something that's going to be relevant to me. I want to know that it has uh, stood the test of time, and I want it to give me some practical direction of where I can go with my life. I've been holding on to to St. Ignatius of Loyola during COVID-19. A lot of people have been asking me how I'm doing, and a lot of people have asked uh, either through Facebook or through other forms, how am I getting through COVID-19? And I'm holding on to St. Ignatius of Loyola um, because what he says is very relevant to what I'm struggling with. Um, It's He's... He stood the test of time, right? Ignatius wrote 500 years ago, and and what he was going through in his life is as relevant today as it has been for the last 500 years. But he's been where we are now, and it, it has stood the test of time. And what I like about Ignatius is he gives you something real concrete to do. And I want to share a, a part of his wisdom with you today, right? In fact, last Friday, I told you that we talked about some concrete things that we can do to live. And I want to just grab one nugget of wisdom from Ignatius today, and I want to share it with you. And he says that when we're going through a season of difficulty, when we're struggling in our spiritual life, he encourages us to not make major changes in our life, but what we can do is we can look deep within our hearts and we can kind of like evaluate how we're doing and we can evaluate um, what God's trying to do in our lives. So we're kind of building on what we talked about last week as well as the first two days of this week. And, and, and today I want to encourage us to understand that the season that we're in right now, this time of COVID-19, is trying to accomplish something in our lives. And we're going to be more disposed to receive that from God if we are able to look deep within our hearts. So if Ignatius were sitting in his chair, he was speaking to you today in Spanish, he would say to you that if we're going to discover what God is trying to do in our lives right now, we're going to discover it by looking deep within our heart, understanding um, how we have responded to everything in the last couple of weeks, uh, understanding um, when we have pushed away from God, understanding when we have given ourselves to God, Ignatius would encourage us into self-reflection. And it's there as we reflect upon our experience of the struggles and as there that we reflect upon our experience of some of the blessings that we are going to be able to be able to see, ah, this is what God's doing in our lives. Let me give you a concrete example from my life. 
I told you that as COVID-19 started, um, it caught me by surprise, just like all of us. I wasn't expecting um, that my life would dramatically change. Um, on March 11th, I was pastor of Christ the Redeemer in Thibodeau, and I was uh, trying to wind down my commitments to the diocese at the pastoral center and my consultation with the bishop. On March 12th, everything flipped over. On March 12th, COVID-19 kind of took South Louisiana by storm. Uh, we made decisions on that day to uh, just to help people. And it was very clear that my time uh, in diocesan administration was not going to be winding down, but it was going to be ramping up. For the first couple of days, I, I just really struggled interiorly. I, I, I just didn't know what was going to happen with life. And there was so much uncertainty, 16-hour days in the office. And I was really just, I was angry at God. I was struggling to find what in the world is God trying to do? And then I held on to Ignatius. I held on to some wisdom. I held on to what uh, I know he would say to me at this time in my life. And I looked deep inside my heart. And I began to pay attention to what I was struggling with. And then I began to ask myself, well, why am I struggling with that? I began to ask myself, well, why, if this is what the people of God need and, and, and this is where you're, you're leading me right now, God, why am I, am I frustrated? Why am I impatient? Why am I um, wanting to not be where I am? I had to look deep within myself. And as I looked deep within and I began to talk to God about those concrete things, I began to realize that, that God was trying to teach me about generosity. God was trying to teach me about trust. God was trying to teach me about letting go of how I think my life needs to be and letting him lead me in the way that he wants my life to be in his eyes. And as soon as I made that shift, as soon as I held on to what he would tell me, I began to see in the midst of the struggles and in the difficulties, they didn't go away, but I was able to see God's purpose in the midst of it all. So for you who are listening today, I just, I just offer you something that's very relevant to your life that has stood the test of time and that gives you something practical you can do. And that is if you want to find out what this season in life is trying to accomplish in your life, you're going to find it right in here. It's not going to be out there on social media. It's not going to be out there in the news. It may not be on the pages of a book. If you want to discover what God's trying to do in your life right now, you're going to find it right here inside your heart. Now, how do you do that? Well, that, that, that's why I think we need to just take a little extra time every day and ask God, right? I know that a lot of us may struggle with prayer, but I just want to encourage you, if you are generous with asking, God will be generous in answering. If you are generous in trying, God will be generous in teaching. If you are generous in honesty, God will be abundantly generous in compassion and mercy and direction. So, so here's where I feel like there would be uh, a place for us to grow today. I'm saying to you that if we want to know what the season of life is that God's revealing to us, we're going to find it in here. And that might intimidate you because we don't know what to do with all this. Or we don't know how to pray or well, take a deep breath. Relax. If God's leading you here, he's not going to leave you hanging. You don't have to do that all by yourself. If God's leading you here, listen to me. He's leading you. He, he, you just follow him. And, and, and take some small steps with me today. In fact, if, if you could just do one small thing with me today, if you could just try to pray with me and maybe, maybe try to read something from the Bible. Why do I like the Bible? I like the Bible because uh, the words are already there. Like I can see these words. I can trust these words in the Bible. And even if I don't hear anything or even if I don't feel anything, I can see what God has said to people in the past as words that he's more than likely saying to me in the present. If you want to discover what God's trying to do in your life right now, it starts with little things like praying every day and looking deep within and being honest with what's on your heart. So how you doing? 
right? And as you begin to look at this time in your life, what are some of the things you're learning about yourself? What are some of the things that you're learning about other people? What are some of the things that you're learning about prayer or about God? And I want to draw you today to, to Psalm 34. Many of you have asked what translation of the Bible that I'm using. I'm using a new translation that came from Ascension Press. It's a great translation. It's one of the ones that um, has offered a lot of hope to me. Uh, it's a new um, a Bible from Ascension Press, and it's the Revised Standard Ber- Version, Second Catholic Edition. That's the version of the Bible that I'm using. Many of you have asked about that. I'm going to go to Psalm 34 in the Bible, and I'm just going to read a couple words um, from it, and we're going to pray together. And I would just encourage you, if you can, just either continue to pray with Psalm 34, maybe read it a couple times, and just listen to see what God says, or maybe do that later on tonight, maybe even with the people that you love and that you can you can share with. But let's read Psalm 34 together and ask God to bless us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be on my mouth. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Let me say that again, huh? I sought the Lord, and he answered me. And delivered me from all my fears. Look to him. So that your faces may never be ashamed. This poor man cried and the Lord heard him. And saved him from all his troubles. I know that a lot of us want to be saved from troubles right now. What if those troubles were here inside our hearts? What if the Lord could save you from the troubles of your heart? It says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in the Lord. Come, O sons, listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord, right? He says, Come to me, and I'm going to teach you how to be in relationship with God, right? The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears toward their cry. What about that as an image, right? The the eyes of God are looking at you and his ears are listening to you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Psalm 34. We thank you for the ways that you are with us right now and the many ways that you're loving us. Put forth your blessings today upon any of us who just need to hear you, who may be struggling to see what you're trying to do at this time and who just needs something to hold on to. Bless all those who are trying to be generous. Bless all those who are trying to hear. Bless all those who are just doing the best they possibly can. May your kingdom come and may your will be done and may you bless us today. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 